me. They tried to reform me since I was 13, but I'd rather be footloose and free. I've whipped all the worst and I've outshot the best. I'm known as a rip snorting king of the West. I don't like to brag, but you probably guessed why I'd rather be footloose and free. <laughs> For my Mustang, I ride a tornado and I sleep on a big cactus bed with a couple of wolves crouched beside me and a mountain lion under my head. The gals all adore me, they tell me I'm grand. They say I'm the best looking gent in the land. To get me a wife is a cinch, understand. But I'd rather be footloose and free. Who <laughs> rather be footloose and free? Hey, Eustace. Rocky, how many times I tell you not to startle me when I'm composing? Well, just compose yourself and read that notice. Notice. A meeting will be held on Tuesday at Rogers General Store to discuss necessary action against Gus Sloan and the A&M Railroad for the way they are taking property from the ranchers of Valley Center. Signed, John Rogers, Bodine Carter, and Gil Blake. Uh-uh. That Gus Sloan is a really mean hombre. I seen him once over Jackson City. Maybe you'll see him more than once this time. Now look, Rocky, why don't we just go to the ranch and, and, and forget this trouble? Trouble will find us soon enough without going hunting for it. Four against one. Come on. this ranch. Now climb back on your horses and get going. You heard him, Leah. You're not forcing me to sell my ranch, and you aren't burning it either like you've done a lot of others. Just a minute, Mr. Blake. We were riding out here to talk business with you when your son here took a shot at us. Naturally, we shot back. I have a pretty good idea who shot first. I wouldn't jump at conclusions so fast if I were you. Pick up your gun. Thanks, stranger. You and your men start moving, Lear, while you're still alive. All right. But I'll give you a little present. Uh, filing a suit to condemn my place, eh? That's it, unless you get smart to yourself. Now, any time you want to sell, the a and will buy. If you don't, the court will force you to give us a right of way. Excuse me for not saying thanks before. I'm Gil Blake. I'm glad to know you, Gil. It's my father. How do you do, Mr. Blake? Howdy. This man and his partner got me out of a pretty tough spot, Dad. Well, I'm much obliged, son. Oh, forget it. My friends call me Rocky. This is my pal, Eustace. Howdy. A neighbor of ours, Miss Jane Carter. I want to thank you for saving Gil's life. New around here, Rocky? Yep, but I think I'm going to like it. We're looking for work. You found it. I can sure use another gun hand. What can you do? 
Who, me? Well, I, I, I can't. I ain't. Uh, uh, Why, he's a cook, <laughs> and the best in the country. He'd better be good. The last cook we had around here, them railroad men strung up by the neck. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I, I don't know whether I want the job or not. My neck won't stand much stretching. It, 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 it. Besides, <laughs> I burned up the last dinner I cooked. You ought to have seen the smoke. Well, it almost caused a war. The engines thought it was a smoke signal. <laughs> <laughs> well, my hands aren't too particular, so you're hired. Johnny, take him in and get him acquainted with the kitchen. Come on, it's this way. <laughs> It seems to me, with all this trouble going on around here, you folks would have gone direct to the head of the A&M Railroad instead of dealing with their police force. We wrote to Morgan, the vice president of Jackson City, and he promised to take action, but nothing happened. We should have started shooting long ago. We've got to fight fire with fire. Taking the law in your own hands will never get you anywhere, Gil. Stick around here a while and you'll change your mind. Except for this place and the Bodine Carter Ranch, all the land along the new right-of-way has been taken over by Sloan and his gang with or without a court order. And it won't be easy getting them back. But breaking the law yourselves will never help matters. Rocky is right. If we can handle this thing legally, so much the better. We're holding a meeting tomorrow to appoint a rancher to take our problems personally to Vice President Morgan. You can come along. We might need you. Good, I will. Ooh. The facts speak for themselves. Tripp's son's murdered. McQuarrie's family burned to death. Johnson's place, nothing but ashes. Yes, and who benefits? The A&M Railroad, that's yeah. who. Yeah. 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 And that's all the proof I need. From now on, I'm talking with hot lead. Now you're right. 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 Neighbors? Neighbors, I want you ranchers who have lost your homes to know that you're welcome to anything in my store. I'll not see anyone starve, regardless of the railroad. John Rogers, you're a real friend. Well, that's what friends are for. Well, you, you'd all do the same if you could. Hello, Rocky. We've been waiting for you. Zanie? Blake and his outfit just rode in. How about the warrant? Here it is. Good. Now remember, it's up to you to do this thing legally. I hope the Blakes see it that way. Those ranchers are my friends. Rocky, this is my father, Bodine Carter. Jane's been singing your praises, young man. We need men like you. I'm glad to know you. Thank you, sir. This is John Rogers. He's with us in our fight against the railroad. Mr. Rogers? You know, from the looks of things, it's going to be a real fight. Folks, you all know why this meeting has been called. Yes. 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 We're here to select a man to present our case to the railroad. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I suggest Jim Blake. Well, I... yeah. Come on, what do you say? That makes it unanimous. You're the oldest settler in the valley, Jim. You're the man for the job. Well, I sure. All right, I'll accept. And I'll do the best I can. <laughs> Clark, what do you want? I'm sorry, Blake. This is a warrant for the arrest of you and Gill. On what charge? Assault with deadly weapons, with intent to kill a duly sworn officer of the law. You're all right, Clark, but these deputies that work for the railroad are no good. They're using the law to cheat us ranchers. The coward is reaching for a gun. Gil, it was self-defense. My father was unarmed. He was trying to show you a paper that Tanner and those other thieves gave him. Resist an arrest, Gil. 
I shot a murderer. And there isn't gonna be any arrest. Get their guns, Eustace. Who, me? Get their guns. Gil, I think your father would tell you what I'm telling you now. Do what the marshal says. And I'll see you get justice. There's only railroad justice around here. But I'm starting my own kind. Beginning now. And we're starting with you, Gil. Take care of that, Mr. Carter. Goodbye, Jane. Gil, please don't. Eustace, where's my gun? Here's your guns. There you are, Mrs. Johnson. That'll help to keep body and soul together while your husband's away fighting for his rights. Now, that's all right. You don't need to thank me for it. Only too happy to do it. Good day. Uh, Mr. Lear, what can I do for you? Give me a package of makings. If Tanner hadn't been killed, it would have been most unfortunate for us. Old man Blake was unarmed, you know. <clears throat> Shall I put that down, or do you want to pay for it? I'll pay for it. Now, Gil Blake and those righteous have put themselves on the wrong side of the law. Here's your change. Want anything else? No, uh... When do you think we'll be able to sell out? If the railroad gets away... That's why I sent Sloan to Jackson City. He's arranging a contract with an Eastern Syndicate. You're pretty smart at that, Rogers. Well, I'm glad you appreciate me, Lear. But remember, we aren't free to sell that land until we first deliver to the railroad the right-of-way they've paid for. It won't be complete until we can deliver the Blake and Carter Rangers. Oh, Mrs. Tripp. Well, I'll be seeing you again, Mr. Rogers. Good day. Well, Mrs. Tripp, come right in. I'm glad to see you here. I have a nice box of supplies all ready for you here. Oh, no, that's all right. I'll take them out. They're quite heavy. Come right along. That's all right, Mrs. Tripp. I know that your husband rode away with Gil Blake. Well, that's just fine. Come right out this way. Now. How's the range? Pretty good, considering what's happened. <laughs> Jane, I'm glad to see you. Our supplies are running pretty low. Your time did just right. Oh, it was me that timed it, Gil. <laughs> no trick, no trick at all. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be. You've had a month's practice. Such food as he fixes up. Your men are threatening to walk out, Gil, unless you hire a new cook. Oh, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> well, they may not have to. The boys and I have worked out some new plans. I brought you a paper. Oh, thanks. law and courts. Why don't the papers tell how the railroad's been breaking the law instead of always accusing us? You'll prove it sooner or later, Gil, but you've got to keep on fighting. That's the only way we can bring the railroad to terms. That's where you're wrong. Gil is very foolish to let everyone know he's destroying a and property. 
Well, my neck was already in a noose. I want this whole valley to know that Jim Blake's son kept up the fight. But your father wanted to fight legally. Yes, and he was murdered. I got it all figured out. I'm turning my ranch over to your father, Jane. Now, the deed is in there and a letter explaining what I want him to do. Oh, Gil, we can't. That's the way it's got to be. Now, the railroad might be able to take the ranch away from me now that I'm outlawed. But they can't take it away from your dad. From what I heard about Sloan, he'll certainly try. Well, the boys and I have talked that over. We're going to protect Bodine Carter from now on. Well, Rocky, it looks like me and you's out of a job. Well, I was going to open up a lunch wagon. I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> you mean you've been experimenting? <laughs> yeah, experimenting. You might be able to get a job with Mr. Carter. He needs some good men. Oh, Jane, tell your father to go see Mr. Morgan as soon as he can. We'll take care of Sloan. I'll say we will. Sloan's coming in on the next stage. Well, in that case, we'd better get started back. Remember, no killing. We have no argument with the stagecoach line. Don't worry. If anybody gets killed, it'll be Sloan. I was tipped off he's the only passenger. All right, pull up and don't look back. You know what to do with your hands, Mr. Sloan. That's better. Come on out. All right, shake him up. Climb on that horse. Look here, you. Now, don't start getting any ideas. Hurry up. That way. you might be interested, Sloan. What happened to Sloan? A black rider took him. Thanks. You can put that gun away. I'm glad Blake's Raiders didn't get a hold of me. Maybe I said thanks too soon. Maybe you did. Now, I'll take a look at whatever papers you have on you. Hurry up. You have a partner. He must not be very smart, or he wouldn't let you carry incriminating evidence like this around. He's smart enough. That contract isn't signed. I guess you're right. Here, I'm not interested. That's the trail to Valley Center. If you keep on butting into other people's business, we're going to get into trouble yet. This happens to be our business, Eustace, and I think it's about time for me to tell Carter what I'm doing here. Hold on, Rocky. Don't you think you're moving a little bit too fast? From now on, the faster the better. I'll find Carter and meet you at your lunch counter. Now, don't forget, you triple tongue nightingales. I do the cooking and you do the singing, and we split the profit. Yeah, and don't you forget we eat here free till there is a profit. Yeah, till there is a profit. Yeah. Then you ain't gonna get no more of this fresh baked bread until you sing a song. You don't think I sat up all night baking bread for nothing, do you? What do you want us to sing? 
Well, sing that song. I beat my dough to make my dough, and when I make my dough, I find it ain't money. Ha, ha, ha. Funny, huh? Well, maybe it ain't funny. But anyhow, sing anything, anything that'll attract the customers. Now the Morgans and the Hatches started feuding Away down in the hills of Tennessee Tennessee? All because a mountain lassie who was 30 plump and sassy Jilted young Buck Morgan on account of me And the trouble it began one Sunday morning I took my bride up to the church house door. Howdy, parson. All the Morgan clan came shooting, and my bride-to-be went scooting, and no one has ever seen her anymore. Where she went, where, where she went, went, no one knows, no one knows. She vanished like a groundhog in the spring. Where she went, where, where she went, went, no one cares, no one cares, but I wish you'd send me back my diamond ring. But the Hatch and Morgan feud kept right on going And the casualties were plenty every week My old uncle Hiram Gantry, he was shot right through the pantry And my pap between the hen house and the creek So I loaded up my double barrel shotgun And I trailed them Morgan boys from shack to shack by myself I did surround them, and I either shot or drowned them in my grandpa has his barrel of apple jack. Where she went, where she went, no one knows, no one knows. She vanished like a groundhog in the spring. Where she went, where she went, no one cares, no one cares. But I wish she sent me back my diamond ring. Ah. Customers. Hi, Mr. Carter. Oh, they ain't customers. They're friends. Hello, boys. Hi. 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 How's business, Eustace? Well, there's a lot of it, but it's all bad. Just get at it. <laughs> what can I do for you gentlemen? Ham and eggs or some nice pork and beans? No beans, thank you. You know, Rocky, I wish I'd known sooner that the vice president of the railroad was your father. Hey, you told him everything, eh, Rocky? That's right. After seeing that contract Sloan had in his pocket, I'm certain he has a partner. And that's the man we've got to find. Then I can present an open and shut case to my father. If it's proof he wants, we'll get it for him. The plan you suggested ought to work. I'll check with you as soon as I see Sloan. Rather big hearted, aren't you, Carter? Offering to sell me a right of way through two ranches for as much as the entire property's worth? That's correct. You see, Mr. Sloan? I know that without right of way through my ranch and the Blake place, the rest of the land you've grabbed off around here isn't worth a dime to you. Rather smart. Well, you're not holding me up, Carter. I have no such intention. On the other hand, this isn't a fire sale. How about the deed to the Blake ranch? Is it in order? There it is. And this is the deed to my place. See for yourself. Do you know, Mr. Carter, I think we can do business after all. But I'm not going to buy just a right away. I'm going to buy both ranches at my own price. Leah here is a legal railroad representative. He has just heard you accept my offer. I sure did, Mr. Sloan. There you are. 20,000 for your ranch and 10,000 for Blake's. Come again, Sloan. Do you think anyone would believe that I sold out for 10 cents on the dollar? We well, here can swear to it. You can also swear that you came in here and started shooting. Just sign the deeds over to me, Mr. Carter, so I can put them in the safe with all the others. Hello, 
Jane. How about a steak sandwich or a tomato or something, Miss Carter? Some other time, Eustace. I'm looking for my dad. Have you seen him? Why, yes, he was... Uh... Well, there he comes now. Oh, I was just asking about you, Dad. I'll talk to you later, Jane. Right now, I've got a few things to say to Rocky. That certainly was a swell idea of yours, telling me to try and make a deal with Sloan, but it didn't work. The deeds to both ranches are in his safe right now. If he has the deeds, he must have bought them, and that's exactly what we want. Sure, but we didn't want to sell both ranches for $30,000, and that's the amount I was forced to take at the point of a gun. What do you mean? You were forced to sell both ranches at the point of a gun? It was Rocky's idea, Jane. You see, I'm positive Sloan isn't working with railroad money. As a matter of fact, the E&M hasn't sent him any money since his trouble started around here. Rocky suggested that I offer to sell him a right of way at a price he couldn't meet unless somebody else put up the money. And in that way, we can locate his partner. You've suggested a lot of things since we've known you, Rocky. Dad, it looks to me as if you've been beautifully double-crossed. Well, I know one man who won't sit idly by and let those papers stay in Sloan's office. I'm going to tell Gil Blake exactly what's happened. I guess it's all my fault, Rocky. I was so mad at what happened in Sloan's office that I had to let off steam. You know, it wouldn't do any harm if all the ranchers in the valley thought the same way she does. I reckon it did look like a legend to a trap, Mr. Carter. But don't you worry. You and Mr. Blake will both get your ranches back, and so will all the other ranchers in this valley. Your word's good with me, Rocky. Your identification papers were all in order. After all, you did save Gil Blake's life, and there's no reason why you double-cross him now. Thanks. I want you to let everybody in town think that I sold you out, and that you and your daughter are moving to another part of the country. I'll get word to my father to meet you in Jackson City, and we'll force Sloan and his gang into a showdown. What about the deeds? If he takes them to the county seat and records them, it'll be just too bad. I've thought about that, too. After tonight, Sloan will have to come to us. I hope you're right. Oh, my goodness, my rabbit! Oh, did I forget to feed you? You stay right there now, Junior. Here you are. I wouldn't close that safe if I were you. If it isn't my mysterious friend. I suppose you know a shot will bring the whole town here. Maybe it will, but you won't hear it. Sit down, Mayor. Blazes are you, anyway? First you save my life and give me back my papers, and then you clean out my safe. Suppose you get in there and figure it out for yourself. beat us to it. He's got the deeds to our land. Who's in? 
Hey, Sloan, get me out of here. Well, uh, where's the key? I don't know. It's out there someplace. What you doing in there? Oh, what do you think I'm doing? Kissing a cow? Get me out of here. Is there a cow in there, too? Oh, no, you won't get break this boy down. Hey, I just found the key. Do you reckon it's the right one? Put it in the lock and see. <laughs> oh, there you are, Mr. Sloan. You. Now, oh, no, look out, Mr. Sloan. Sure got all the deeds all right. And here's the contracts you told me about. But they still ain't signed. That isn't all. Look at these receipted bills. That's fifteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred, twenty-three, and all for supplies for the railroad and bought from Roger's store. That's funny. Why would the railroad do business with Rogers when he's on the side of the ranchers? That's just what I've been thinking. You know, these bills are important. I have a hunch this is a lead we've been looking for. There are other stores in town besides Rogers. Yeah, and they're all after railroad business, but none of them get any. You know, Eustace, I think you picked a bad location for your lunch counter. Bad location? Like heck I did, I'm doing good here. I think you'll do much better up alongside Rogers' store. Oh, I can. <laughs> Say, I want you to put these away where no one will find them. I'm riding out to the Carter Ranch the first thing in the morning and tell him what happened. You better let me put you up a lunch. What for? <laughs> that Carter girl never feeds you, not after the way she told you off. I'd rather take my chances with her than with your grub. <laughs> well, I like that. <laughs> You shouldn't have come here, Gil. If they catch you now, Nobody's they... going to catch me, Jane. I'll see who it is. Oh, it's you, Rocky. I was afraid it might have been some of Sloan's men. You're a fool to come here like this, Gil. Sloan and his detectives are guarding every trail. Well, they haven't caught me yet. He's right, Gil. You shouldn't take such chances. You didn't used to be so anxious to get rid of me, Jane. Gil, it's not that. But there was a robbery in town last night, and you and your men were seen riding away from Sloan's office. Yes, I know. But I didn't get those deeds. The Black Rider beat me to him. The Black Rider? Well, who is he? Why did he want to rob the Sloan office? I don't know as much about it as I do. But I'd like to meet up with him face to face. This is the second time he's interfered with my plans. Well, if you don't get away from this ranch, Prano, the law is liable to step in and do a little interfering. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Maybe you do. If Sloan or his men lay hands on you, they'll shoot first and talk afterwards. You know, the reward was increased since last night. Yes, I know that too. An extra thousand dollars. Hey. 
Maybe you'd like to try and collect it. Listen, Gil, I'm not talking just to hear my own voice. You were loco to come down out of the hills in the daytime alone. Uh, you're going to get on that horse of yours if I have to drag you out of here and put you on him. Cut out the big brother act, Rocky. You know, I've been wanting to meet up with you ever since you double-crossed Bodine Carter. Now, this is where you stop worrying about me and me about you. I knew he'd show up here at the ranch, so I waited for him. I can use the reward. I'm sorry, Gil. You're contemptible. I don't work for charity, Jane. What about that reward? Don't worry about it. We'll tell Sloan and you can collect from him. Much obliged. I will. Go on, put him on his horse. Get going. So long, Jane. Tell your father I dropped over. You probably thought we wouldn't be here. You must have known Sloan told us to get out by noon. Why, you... Hello, Mr. Sloan. Hello, Rocky. Lear tells me you're responsible for capturing Gil Blake. That's right. Well, I guess that entitles you to the reward. The marshal informs me that Blake still insists he doesn't know the Black Rider and hasn't got those deeds. Is that so? I don't believe Blake. Now, you were smart enough to catch him. Do you think you can put your hands on those papers? I don't know. I might if I tried. Suppose you have a try. Be a nice cut in it for you. But they belong to the railroad. I have no authority. That's easy. I'll give you the authority. There you are. So this means I'm working for the A&M, huh? Eh? That means you're working for me. Oh, I get it. Oh, hello, Miss Carter. What can I do for you? Here are the keys to our ranch, Mr. Sloan, and these are to the Blake place. I'm awfully sorry things turned out this way, but, well, business is business. We understand, Mr. Sloan. We just trusted the wrong man. Goodbye. Goodbye, Pete. Goodbye, Charlie. Go Good luck to you. Well, I never thought you were a quitter, Bodine. I know when I've had enough, John. I'm through with trying to buck the railroad. As far as I'm concerned, me and my daughter are never coming back to Valley Center. Goodbye, boys. Well, goodbye. 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 Well, I don't know. Carter's not the sort to run out on his friends. I'm betting he goes directly to Morgan and tries to bring the vice president of the A&M back with him. Maybe me and the boys had better make sure that Carter stays away from Valley Center. Permanently. Might be the safest way there. Well, I've got a little job to do myself, Sloan. You know, a few papers that needed to be hunted up. Well, good luck, Rocky. Thanks. I'll need it. Say, Rocky. You ain't leaving without taking a little snack. I got special on today, two beans and a plate of soup for a nickel. <laughs> well, just save it to wash the dishes with. Say, did you get a chance to talk to Carter? Yeah, I explained everything to him. He agreed that Gil was a lot safer locked up in jail. I thought he would. Oh, and uh, smothered with onions. I'll be back for it later. It shall be done. One steak smothered with onions.
Sparky. Got those deeds in there, too? I guess you're outsmarting me this time. All the time. I knew you'd take the bait the moment I ordered the boys to round up Carter. Where's the contract in those deeds, Rocky? Try and find them. Just what I intend to do. Get on that horse. Bring along that black outfit of his. We'll need it. Boys, I'm worried. Rocky's been gone since the stage left yesterday. And that's a long time when Sloan's mixed up in it. Maybe he's been dry -gulls. I wouldn't put nothing past that Sloan. Neither would I. We gotta do something and do it quick. Hey, look. playing and singing. I'm going to cook up something. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine, dwelt a miner, 49er, and his daughter, Clementine. Light she was, and like a fairy, and her shoes were number nine. Herring boxes without topsies, sandals were for Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. Hey, Roger. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Why don't you tell those howling coyotes to get away from there? Well, the marshal gave him a permit, and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. Drove she ducklings to the water every morning just at night. I struck a her foot against a splinter. Fell into the foaming brine, ruby lips I'm pickled. above the water, blowing bubbles soft and fine. Alas for me, I was no swimmer, so I lost my clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling clementine. You are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry clementine. But I'm telling you, Rogers, Rocky won't talk. He has to talk. If we don't find that contract and those deeds to the ranches we've taken over, well, we're in a fine fix. Where are you hiding him? At a camp over on Rock Creek. Nobody ever goes there. Well, it's up to you to make him talk. Hey, what's up? You'll find out. we got to get Gil out of jail. How you going to do it? Yes, sir. I got a little concoction here that worked for me in San Francisco a few years ago. It ought to work for me now. I've got a plan that should work. Oh, boy. I call it my dang guru. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Sloan? Could I get you a nice hard-boiled egg or something? The egg. Hot soup. And a little bit of ketchup. Oh, baby. <laughs> now, let's see. I think I better taste it. No, maybe I better not. There, my friends, is what's going to get Gil out of jail. But how in the world is a bowl of soup going to get him out of jail? <laughs> Swamp oil. Bottled by Mike, your old fitting. <laughs> Here I come. That's for you. What is it? Soup. I figured it was so cold in the jail here, you need a little warming up. So I stewed this a special for you. Oh, you shouldn't have done it. I don't like soup. You don't like soup? No. Here. You ain't had enough to eat. You take it. Oh, thanks. Say, it smells good. Thank you. I made that special for you. Say, that's Boston black bean soup. 
with rare old Kentucky bourbon in it. And old Southern comfort. Kentucky bourbon? Uh. And old Southern comfort? Uh. Why didn't you say so before? Give me that soup. That's much too rich for prisoners. Besides, they ain't supposed to have any liquor. Ah, oh, say, that's all right. <sighs> that's good. Ah, not bad. I had not... some of it myself. Mm. I'm going to have to come over to your place and eat sometime. Well, that's all right. Yes, sir, that's the best. Oh. Oh. Hey, what's eating you? A soup. A soup. What's what rich? rich, you know. Oh. 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 Cookie. Cookie. Watch my prisoner for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hey, what's going on here, Coop? Don't ask any questions. As soon as we get out of here, you run straight for the horses. I'll tell you all about it as soon as we clear town. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It worked all right! Well, you sure look like Gil Blake's men now. I'll go after Rocky and meet you at the pass before the stage gets there. All right, get started. feel right at home in that black outfit, Rocky. It's come in mighty handy to you quite a few times. Now it's coming in handy to us unless you change your mind about talking. I'm not saying anything. Well, have it your own way. Naturally, you know that Bodine Carter, his daughter, and Morgan, vice president of the a and are coming in on that stage this afternoon. We don't want them to reach Valley Center. During the attack, you'll be accidentally shot. When your body is found beside the stagecoach, dressed in those black clothes, you'll get the blame. We'll be in the clear. Untie him. Get him up, all of you. this gun barrel over your thick skull. Tie him up, Eustace. All right, Sloan, get that rope and you tie him up. Come on, all of you, over there. Get over there! Get over there, we hadn't got all day, back to back. Get that rope, Sloan. No monkey business now. Eustace told me who you were, Rocky. Sorry for mistrusting you. I don't blame you, Gil. 
I couldn't do much explaining at the time. Come on. Hold it, Eustace. Sloan, we're changing clothes. Sloan? Well, why didn't you say so? Hurry up. I'm sure, Mr. Carter, by the time we reach Valley Center, Rocky will have all the evidence we need to take action against Sloan and Rogers. Those have receded bills you say Rocky found in Sloan's safe speak for themselves. Rogers attended all the meetings, Mr. Morgan. That's how Sloan and his men knew every move the ranchers made. Well, you won't be able to do much unless Rocky still has those receipted bills and the contract. I wish you'd tell me about Rocky sooner, Dad. He certainly had me fooled. If he's fooled you and Gil, Jane, he's fooled everybody. And that's just what we wanted. You were right, Sloan, about that black outfit coming in handy. I've got to stop the stage before your men attack it at the pass. So I'm taking you with me, just so I won't get shot in the back like you planned. I'm going with you, Rocky. Not with that shoulder. Sloan here is all the help I need. Eustace, take Gill into town to the doctor and tell Marsha Clark what happened. Now get moving. You'll ride my horse. Now get mounted. Out that way. Well, if Rocky thinks I'm going to let him handle this show alone, he's crazy. We're going to put on a little circus of our own, Eustace. Come on. Now you're talking, Gil. I wonder what's delaying Sloan. He's supposed to meet us here with Rocky. We better not wait for Sloan, or the stage will pass us up. Stop that attack. And if your men don't shoot you before you can talk to them, I will. Now get going. Dad, 
What in tarnation? <laughs> I might have known it to be you. You're a fine son. I sent you up here to straighten things out peaceably. Why didn't you let me know things were as bad as all this? Give me a chance, Dad. I had to first find out who's behind Sloan. I know. According to Mr. Carter here, it was Rogers, the storekeeper. Well, that's right. Jane, I'm sorry to get you tangled up in a mess like this. Oh, don't you worry about me, Rocky. I've never been so glad to see anybody in my whole life. I, well, that is, we thought you were killed. Well, Sloan and his gang made a slight mistake. Gil! Hello, Jane. Gil sure knew what he was talking about when he said there's going to be a circus. Mm. I thought I told you to take Gil in town to the doctor. Oh, shucks. A team of horses couldn't have kept him away from that excitement. He's a regular fire eater. <laughs> a fire eater is right. Dad, this is the kind of a man I'm really proud to introduce to you. Gil, that's my father. Mr. Morgan, it's a pleasure. And from now on, I don't think we're going to have any more trouble around Valley Center. I think we should protest my life. I'm going to tell you something right now, Marshal. This is an outrage. You haven't got a thing on me. Now, that's where you're wrong. We've got a lot of contracts and deeds that are not going to look so good in court. Where'd you hide them, Eustace? Where to hide them? Huh. Oh, I didn't think a little bacon would hurt the papers any. And this loaf of bread here is the safest place I could find to put them. I'll get them for you in a second. <laughs> yeah. You bread kind of hard, ain't it? As a rule, my bread's pretty soft. I should have brought a saw. Ah, oh, there you are. Rocky, didn't you say the contract for the sale of those ranches around Valley Center wasn't signed? Well, yes, I... Well, they wasn't signed when I put them in the dough. Take a look at it now. They signed it with invisible ink so that no one would suspect them in case it fell into the wrong hands. The moisture from the dough and the heat of bacon developed it. Yes. I reckon those signatures will stand up against any judge, Rogers. I'll say they will. Well, I said you had nothing to do with that. Well, there's one thing sure, Mr. Morgan. When you present the evidence in court against the Raiders of San Joaquin, it won't be half-baked. <laughs>